Hi, this is David Gronoski, host of A Neighbor's Choice and Things Hidden Podcast, as well as some of our other programs like Science and You with our Chief Science Advisor, Dr. You, and our Seed Oil Survival Series that we continue to have great fun unpacking the truth of nutrition. I wanted to give you a quick little message saying that we appreciate all the support that we get from our monthly contributors and our one-time donation supporters, and we'd encourage all of you to go to our website, a neighborschoice.com, click on contribute and make a monthly pledge today, whether it's a dollar, $5, 15, 20, 50, whatever you want to do, doesn't matter. Just be a part of building this new media project that we've developed to empower and inform, to inspire, to kickstart a scientific renaissance, an anthropological breakthrough and reformation in the church. All these things are possible with your support right now. So make that commitment today and help us keep doing the productions that we have. Thank you. So today we have a special seed oil survival episode, a returning guest, raw egg nationalist, who has a piece out in American Mind that I think touches on a subject matter that I think is very important, something that I've been um, trying to sound the alarm about for some time, which is the role of patents in controlling food. Right now, patents drive medicine, and I think our health and the science of healing is severely retarded due to the uh, outsized influence of patents and medicine. And here we have the same um, ugly, regressive mechanism rearing its head once again in the world of what we eat, uh, which is, you know, uh, I guess a natural extension of what happens when we're governed by monopolies like the Food and Drug Administration. They're going to make everything food and everything drug patent driven, which is garbage oligarchy uh, slop. So Ray, Raw Egg Nationalist, how you doing, sir? Uh, I'm good. Thanks, Dave. It's great to be back on the show. It's been a while. Yes. And uh, tell me a little bit about your article, American Mind, for those, of course, who have not heard of it, uh, what the title is and the, the general point. So the piece is called Back to the Future of Food. And uh, I start off by talking about Western price. And I talk about the kind of changes that Western price was um, witness to in the uh, early 20th century when he wrote or the changes that inspired him to write Nutrition and Physical Degeneration, his great masterpiece about the uh, negative effects of consuming new industrial diets made up of um, refined products, refined wheat products, processed foods, canned goods, that sort of thing. Um, so I start out by talking about uh, the, the way that the, the move to processed foods has been a terrible, terrible disaster for human health in the 20th century. And then I get on to seed oils oh, by way of by way of saying that, you know, the transition that took place in the 20th century, the, this move towards processed foods to, to novel foodstuffs was was sold to us in a number of different ways one way was one one reason it was sold to us was for convenience you know we were told these these foods are um convenient you can you know like like microwave foods you know you pop it in the microwave uh press a button and then you've got a meal but the other thing that we were promised was renewed health and that's uh where i start to talk about seed oils and uh as we know as i'm sure your listeners know uh, seed oils have been a disaster for human health, and now there's a big backlash against seed oils. So it's it's a uh, it's almost like a countercultural movement, I would say, against yeah. seed oils. And what's interesting, and this is the basic focus then of the art of the article, is on the way that this countercultural movement against seed oils has been co opted by particular brands and one company in particular zero acre farms to sell a new uh a totally novel food stuff um to the to the to the public and my basic my basic point is that this is totally the wrong answer to the question of seed oils if the if the problem is that 
we have abandoned the traditional foods that our ancestors ate, the, the nutrient-dense animal foods, the animal fats that our ancestors ate, then why are we then supposed to be supposed to believe that actually what we need to do instead of going back to those fats if we want and foods if we want restored health why are we supposed to believe that actually what we need is a totally new corporate owned product to um uh you know to, to restore us to health and um uh, do away with all of the terrible negative effects that eating seed oils have had right now um now in, and the reason why i saw your article is because you had tag me in it because of the interview that I had conducted with uh, Tucker Goodrich and um, who, who's, who's been a proponent of zero acre and uh, the uh, gentleman who lose my name, his name eludes me right now, but Jeff Knobs. Uh, yeah. Jeff Knobs, who I interviewed, who's one of the proprietor owners of the zero acre um, project. What was it about that interview that stuck out to you? Well, what stuck out to me really in that interview was was the fact that they couldn't say, absolutely would not say that the microbes. OK, so Zero Acre Farms cultured oil is made by microbes in a process that is not at all dissimilar from brewing beer. So you yeah. put microbes and a food stuff, in, in their case, sugarcane in a bioreactor and the microbes eat the or ferment the sugarcane and they produce oil. But what Jeff Nobbs and Tucker Goodrich just wouldn't say is that actually the microbes that are used in the process are genetically modified. And that that's what that's what stuck out for me, because I think that is that is the problem or the or the the, the fact of genetic modification is it te it tells us what it tells us fundamentally what zero acre farms product is and what it means uh and and what it means basically because it's genetically modified is is patents it means con it means control it means corporate yeah. consolidation so that's now, what now to be fair to be fair to them from what i recall they actually did admit that the bacteria they use to produce the product is a gmo bacteria but they said that the end result is not a GMO product. We merely mm, yeah. use a GMO bacteria to produce this byproduct. And so that and so that was kind of what they kept emphasizing. And then the question that I asked, you know, which was, you know, how much more of a um, benefit to the product do you get by using the GMO version of the bacteria? Could you not just use the bacteria without the GMO and just run that product, the byproduct of the natural bacteria, uh, how much more of a benefit do you get in terms of, I guess, I think the issue was, and I, you know, I had to watch the interview again, but I think it was about, uh, I think it came down to like how much efficient monounsaturated fat yield do you get from using the, the, the natural form of the bacteria versus how much more monounsaturated fat, you know, without the PUFA, do you get if you genetically modify the bug? And I was trying to kind of indicate to them, why don't you guys just run the, the, um, you know, the natural version of the bacteria um, just, just for folks who would be a little bit concerned about, you know, using a product that's a byproduct of, of a GMO uh, bacteria. And, but ultimately, you know, I think what you're getting at kind of, um, becomes the the rub there is that you know if it's not GMO then you can't patent it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And also, you know, this 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 thing about the fact that the oil is is separated from the from the GMO bacteria, so actually the product isn't GMO. I mean, that's that may be that may be true, but that still doesn't mean that there aren't risks associated with the use of a GMO bacteria to produce or GMO yeast to produce um, a product like that. So in the article, uh, Back to the Future of Food for the American Mind that I wrote, um, I talk about a very famous incident called the Shoadenko incident, which took place in the late 1980s. There was a company called Shoadenko, which was manufacturing tryptophan supplements, among other things. And um, 
so tryptophan's an amino acid that, that you can get from food, but people people supplement it. Um, they were making their tryptophan supplement in basically the same manner as as Zero Acre Farms makes its cultured oil. So bacteria in a bioreactor um, producing tryptophan as a side product of of um, fermenting some particular food stuff. But what Shoadenko did was they decided that they wanted to increase the yields of tryptophan. And so they introduced a, uh, a g- genetic modification into the bacteria that they were using. And shortly after they did this, thousands of people in the US came down with a vanishingly, with, uh, the US was the, was the main market for this supplement. Uh, they came down with a vanishingly rare um, uh, disease, n- nerve disease called EMS, eosinophilia myalgia syndrome, I think. And uh, dozens, maybe even hundreds died. Thousands were injured seriously for life. And um, it turns out, or we don't well, we don't fundamentally know exactly what happened because uh, Shoadenko uh, purged all of the bioreactors before anybody could actually have a proper look and, and a proper investigation, and they settled with all the families very quickly to avoid any kind of scrutiny. Now they said that there was a bad um, carbon filter on the bioreactor that let in some unspecified um, contaminant. But what a lot of uh, other people think, experts, genuine experts think, is that the genetic modification that was introduced had some kind of side effect that made the bacteria produce a toxic byproduct that was then in the tryptophan. Now, we know with genetic modification that it's imprecise. Even this new CRISPR-Cas9 um uh, technology is imprecise. We're still we're still talking about um, potential side effects, potential uh, unwanted um, alterations to genetic code. It's totally it's totally possible. Uh, no scientist would deny that that happens. Any scientist who works in genetic engineering would say yes. This is a genuine risk of of these um, uh, gene editing interventions. So the problem with potentially with um, zero acre farms food is that it, with this cultured oil is that actually um the fact that the, the the bacteria are genetically modified means that actually you have the potential for something like what happened with the shoadenko um or potentially what happened with shoadenko to happen again and so at the very least what i think needs to happen is that there needs to be firstly i think the company needs to be honest about the fact that its bacteria are genetically modified that the product does involve gmo even if it doesn't necessarily contain gmo and certainly if you go on the the zero acre website then there, there's basically no indication that they're using gmo bacteria and all in fact all the the website really says about gmo is that the is that the food stuff the sugar cane that's used is non-gmo so they're, they're trumpeting that they're saying you know this is a non-gmo product but there's nothing about the bacteria the other thing I think is that, of course, regula- there, ne- there need to be stricter regulations and there needs to be better, there needs to be much closer scrutiny of products like this because this is actually something that is going on a lot now in the food supply in the US and, and elsewhere is that you are, you're getting food products that are being produced using GMO, organ- uh, using GMO, um, but, 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 nobody's told that that's actually what's going on so people don't know that they're consuming these products there's a, a vegan ice cream for instance called brave robot and one of the proteins in brave robot ice cream is manufactured by a gmo yeast you wouldn't know it but that's but but it is and then you've got the impossible burger and um uh it's special ingredient heme which uh gives the you know fake meat burger uh, a sort of meaty taste and makes it bleed when you bite into it again that's the product of a gmo so what yeah, i what, think what is what is, happen- what is making it bleed you know yeah well, so it's yeah it's, it's it's this product called heme it's it's produced it's a, a gmo it's a gmo soy byproduct and um and it's sort of yeah it, it's it's um it's the sort of unique selling point of impossible. It makes burger. you wonder, does the soy scream at night in the laboratory that produces that kind <laughs> of blood? It's repulsive. 
So is it like a tumor? They're they're producing tumors in their lab, and then they 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 cut them, and and blood comes out, and they use that for the meat in the Impossible Sludge Burger. No, I think it's I think it's just I think it's just a GMO that produces this particular variety of mm. this thing's called soy leg hemoglobin or something they call it. But anyway, it makes it look makes the makes the meat bleed and it makes it taste meaty. Is, it, like is a, the soy blood is the soy blood dyed with red five or is it actually produces an iron red like a uh, natural color by its own? Uh, th- that I don't know. That I don't know. Um, but yeah, yeah, it does produce a red bloody bloody sort of color well, that's the one thing we can say about the new man of the universal world order we're building is that when you cut him he bleeds a nice soy red right <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly exactly but you know this is so this is happening on quite a large scale we're all already having all of all of these products uh laundered into the food supply without people knowing and i just think i just think that that is a bad that is now, a bad now, idea. as a, as a you're 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 a British guy, so you're a little bit more favorable to regulation than you know the American spirit. Yeah. Uh, uh, so I mean, I'm more skeptical of regulations. I, like for example, I think what you're what you're engaging in, you know, in trying to argue in intellectual space and in a discourse space in media uh, against a product, that is its own kind of regulation. You know, in some sense, they, you know, mm, the market regulation, sure. putting pressure and putting exposure and trying to challenge the the product so um you know don't you think that that is probably the more effective route of regulation than say you know coming to a you know central uh organization like the fda oh i I mean look i think that i think that the fda is hopelessly compromised and uh i mean i don't i don't know that it would be possible to have (laughs) to have any real faith in the fda to regulate the food supply um whether whether you could have faith in any organization to regulate the food supply i don't know i think you could i think you could put together a better organization than the fda and use it to hold corporate producers um responsible in a way that they're not at the moment i mean i'm 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 not some sort of a big government man i don't think that big government is the answer but i do i do think that I certainly think that there needs to be better testing of these products, longer term testing of these products, consumption, animal feeding studies, for instance, that that just aren't taking place at the moment. Um, and uh, to be, I want to I want to give the the, the argument uh, a fair hearing from the zero acre perspective, which is particularly because you know I, I agree with the general sentiment you're raising that people should be able to be cautious about what's in you know it's like that it's kind of like a we're we're in this quant this 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 conundrum where you you look at the situation you say my goodness we're so heavily status regulated that if we're going to be in this paradigm at least let the regulations know let us know on packaging if this was produced using a gmo and you know organism right um yeah but but it's like you know but then it's like but 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 then you're still asking a deeply captured oligarch run fake agency and the whole apparatus to like do something you know benevolent is kind of insane um at the same time you know you you look at kind of what zero acre is saying in particular they're saying there's this such this there's such a big problem with seed oils that in this instance you know, um, there's no evidence to suggest that there's any, you know, byproduct that's produced by this G- GMO uh, bacteria that creates this monounsaturated fat. And there's such an epidemic of massive disease uh, caused by seed oils. And then they say, and you can't uh, scale up, in their opinion, they've done the math, because that's the thing I kept asking the Jeff, Mr. Jeff Knobs about is that they've done the math and you can't, you can't have a million, you know, Joel salad in local agriculture farms producing uh, beef tallow. And even if you did, if you'd scaled up everybody around the, you know, uh, America starts, you know, running beef tallow and their farms and everybody's buying it and they're scaling it up and you, and you scale up olive oil production and you scale up, 
um, you know, coconut oil and everything else, all hands on deck, all the great fats unite. It's still not going to be able to, uh, you know, like replace the volume of food that seed oil currently uh, is able to feed the world with. And so therefore you have to go to an extraordinary links link, a link, uh, like taking a, uh, you know, GMO organism to produce this uh, monounsaturated fat and that that's what's necessary to feed the world. Otherwise you just can't feed the, the population of the world is too large and the natural fats uh, are not able to scale up to meet the, the demand that seed oil has been meeting. Yeah. I mean, yes, I, they, this is, this is the argument that they make. This is the, this is like the hard argument that they make. Um, in other words, have you done the math to say no, you know, or have, have you or someone, you know, done the math to say, actually, no, we can scale up all the fats, all the healthy fats. Well, what I, I, I mean, I haven't, I haven't done the math and I, I mean, I think it will be, I think it will be quite complicated obviously to do, right. um, because because of course when you're talking about fat in the food supply i mean you're we're talking about huge amount huge amounts of wastage as well it may very well be the case that yes um you know the out of the total amount of calories of food that is produced um you know you you couldn't replicate or you couldn't replace rather um all of the seed oil calories within that food um with tallow um or butter or whatever or olive oil um, but but the question is but the question is actually well would you be replacing all of it in the in the first place would it be better would it not be better maybe to reduce the the kind of overproduction of food that we have and the wastage of food but what I, what I really what I really wanted to to sort of draw attention to is the fact that the way that these planetary um, arguments or planetary perspectives are used to justify the creation of these new products now. I mean, in my in my book, the Eggs Benedict Option, then I talk about the the argument for or the movement for a global plant based diet, and it's it's the argument is made on the basis of a uh, population projections. So you know they're going to be ten billion people in the world by twenty fifty, uh, and b. Uh, climate change um uh, emissions targets so we need to feed 10 billion people uh within the boundaries of the paris climate accords within the emissions agreements that we've all that our nations have all um signed up for so what what's happening is this this sort of these kind of planetary arguments are being used to justify the transformation of the food system the global food system uh in favor of corporations um so the the plant based the plant based future is a future of you know new high yield genetically modified crops novel proteins like lab grown meat plant based meat farmed insects uh aquaculture all this kind of stuff all of which is totally corporate controlled and i just think i just think it's i think it's very telling that yet that yet again with this with this cultured oil, we're being told, you know, we have to think about the about the, the entire planet and we have to give up uh, the foods that our ancestors thrived on for the sake of the planet um, and the global population. And I think. Well, I and just, again, just to be just to be clear, because I want to be fair, uh, you know, I know sides on both sides. I, I, I tend to be skeptical of GMO derived products. I want to be clear about that, but mm. for the sake of their argument, a lot of the folks behind zero acre will gladly say, please, by all means, eat your butter and your tallow. That's wonderful. But this is a product that's going to meet a, a, a kind of a big scale project that those things can't on their own meet. That's their argument. They're not telling you, you can't use your, now, I think what you're talking about is a general bigger theme driving these kind of new patented based met foods right where you're saying yes the general argument in the big picture kind of message that you're hearing from that space is give up your ancestral fats right but but yes. that doesn't mean that every player you know like zero acre is saying please give it up a lot of from the messaging i've heard it's been 
by all means, eat your ghee, your tallow and everything. But this is going to meet a need for like restaurant scale, you know, food production. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's what I also find interesting, of course, is the way that Zero Acre has kind of insinuated itself within the sort of bait, you know, it's kind of based and red pilled health. Uh, Twitter space with people like Seed Oil Disrespector and, you know, get, getting um, someone like Catherine Shanahan on board. Um, it's, I don't know. I just, I, I think there's a, I think, I think there's a lot of misrepresentation going on. That's what, that's what I would say. That's one of the things that. What's being one of, misrepresented specifically? Well, I do. Well, I just in the sense that it's not it's absolutely not like a based and red pilled <laughs> health product. And it's mm -hmm. funny. It's funny that Catherine Shanahan, who is, you know, an, an advocate of ancestral eating, her book, Deep Nutrition, has been a big influence on a lot of people in the alternative health Twitter. I liked it. I read it, you know, how many years ago, three, four years ago and thought it was great. And, you know, she's saying we need to go back to the. We need to go back to the to the fats and the foods that our ancestors ate if we want to have restored health. And I, I just people thought that that it was going to be that it was going to be something that wasn't maybe sort of wasn't like all of the other novel products that are that are being held up as the future of food. But then, you know, the the patent comes out and then you can see that it's a recombinant yeast and uh you know, it's it's GMO, it's patented, da da da. Um, I just maybe misrepresentation is the wrong word, but I think that they've been I think they've been very canny to position themselves in a way to sort of um ride on the coattails of the of the sort of um based health um right. criticism of, of seed oils in particular. And then it turns out that actually it's it's a less than ideal product that is being justified in a very very particular way that doesn't actually fit with the message of based health twitter at all i mean people on based health twitter aren't talking about whether um tallow and and butter are, are, are scalable to feed the entire world um yeah, yeah I mean, it's kind of be... kind of like uh it's kind of like i i agree with the general sentiment of that food industry space of saying I, I agree with the, your criticism towards this notion of saying it's almost like you little peon taking a, a Titan's view of the world, you know, stand up with the gods of corporations and consider the problems of trying to feed the world. And once we take you to that mountaintop, that lets you know why, you know, things are going to have to be changed around here if you want to have a future that feeds the world mm -hmm. in a healthy way. And I agree with that. It's kind of a, there's a little tinge as a, as a, you know, mimetic theorist myself there's a tinge of sacrificial um uh, you know kind of uh grandeur there where it's almost like you know you know look you, you, you consider the view of the gods to try to feed feed billions of people to kind of like challenge you in your hopes that the world could could eat ancestrally to kind of almost intimidate you into going along with i mean i can see that for sure in the general industry and i do think that um, I, I'm going to lean towards, or not lean, but buy into using ancestral fats as the only solution, right? But, mm. um, but I do think that it's it's. I think I think what we need to be able to do is to show that folks can scale up. You know, yeah. and here's another here's another thing that I <laughs> I have a little bit of a um, rub with it is a lot of these folks don't don't take into account, for example, palm oil. Palm oil is like the bad boy of saturated fats, you know, mm -hmm. but palm oil is an industrially used fat that is very saturated and it gets a bad rap because of the environmental things. And I think they're beating the hell out of orangutans to produce it. Yeah. But if there's a yeah. way we could resolve the conflict between the humans and the orangutans, uh, perhaps palm oil should be brought into the equation for how to feed the world. If we want to have the considerations of, of, of the Titan view, you know, it's almost that, you know, you know, the British view of, you know, how are we going to manage our empire and feed the world? That kind of mindset. America has it now, too, of course. How do we feed the world? It is an arrogant kind of it is a kind of arrogant question on one level to, to assume whatever we do, it must be to, to feed the world like we're feeding a zoo or something, you know. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I, I agree totally. I think I think what you're saying about palm oil is very interesting and it is. um 
obviously there are bad things that happen with palm oil like you say the orangutans i mean it's it's horrible the the, the destruction i don't even know what the hell they're doing to orangutans but whatever they can do let's resolve that matter and double down mm. on the palm oil i mean palm oil is currently used for a lot of mass produced foods you know and i think what they do maybe in the numbers and i'm not sure i'd have to go back and look at what their sources are i think they're including palm oil in the bad boy oil group you know what i mean but it shouldn't be right yeah. palm oil is actually no we would call that the Han Solo of the saturated of the, you know, it's a little bit of a tweener, you know, a little bit of a, a dark yes. horse that needs to get uh, maybe a little bit ethically uh, sorted out, but uh, we're going to keep that on the good guy team. Cause it's not a, it's not a vegetable oil in the sense of a seed oil. No, you know? it's a fruit, it's a fruit oil. And uh, I think if you include palm oil, coconut oil, ghee, butter, um, tallow, uh, maybe healthier forms of lard down the road, uh, you know, there's all kinds of opportunities. I mean, people are looking at trying to make chicken fat safer. You know, uh, she butter is a ha highly saturated fat. All these different things could be produced and scaled to meet the localities that they're most effectively grown in. And I think you could have a, a situation where all hands on deck fats could come together uh, and feed the world in their own regional backyard the way it should be. And so I, I think that is the position to, to shoot for. Because I don't, because I, I think the best point you're making, uh, sir, that I think I totally agree with is we cannot have a patent based solution. Patents are going to skew our freedoms. They're going to, because patents are, are government granted. They're gr government granted monopolies and it's ruined our health, our, our medical situation. Mm -hmm. It's, ru you know, that's why we can't know about generic uh, drugs, you know, like uh, Z pack helping with this latest uh, pandemic we had it was a, a generic antibiotic has a lot of antiviral properties and of course everybody was told don't touch it just like a few other more infamous drugs that are in the generic public domain space and i think that food should stay in the public domain you know because once we start tampering with you know trying to create patents behind our food supply system i think we're going to get into real trouble there yeah yeah absolutely well well i mean you know, cor corporate con the food supply is already under enormous corporate consolidation. You know that is the that is the story of the twentieth century, really. And and the effects of corporate consolidation on our health, um, corporate consolidation of the food supply have been have been terrible. You know, I mean, we yeah. are we are in the dreadful dreadful mess we're in today precisely because of corporate consolidation of the food supply. So, um. I mean, I'm not saying that there isn't a place for corporations in, in the food supply. I'm not saying that at all, but they don't need more power than they've got already. Well, it's this corporate it's this corporate state fascist relationship that we're most concerned about, you know, and and yeah. those companies who live by the ESG sword will die by the ESG sword. And if you if you live by that and you, you say, oh, we're going to get support for our product because it's going to get all these credits, social credits from government involved you know scams for the climate change thing well those credits will be taken away from you if you don't participate in you know um you know going along with their latest schemes you know uh, oh we you know if you i mean imagine a digital credit score where it's like you can't have this patented food product because you know you've been a, a bad boy or something you get limited rations because your 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 social credit score is lower than it should be because you've been uh, tweeting or reading the wrong stuff right yeah 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 i mean that's the that's the that's the great worry and uh we're, we're staring down the barrel of that really you know it's not it's not beyond the realms of possibility in the next sort of 10 10 to 15 years maybe even sooner as the yeah. as the climate hysteria really starts to ramp up i mean we've already been told you know it's, we've now entered the era of global boiling um so i mean yeah we we we, we, we will see but but corporations and corporate patents are a central part of this of this whole system and like i say they're a central part of this vision of the of the plant based future where you know um we all we all have a basically like a a, a global government determined allocation of calories and a macronutrient breakdown and all of the you know the grains that we that we eat the novel proteins all of it is is controlled by by corporations that own the the products via patents i mean that's right. you know that's been that has been laid out that is you could yeah. read 
you can read policy documents about it. This isn't this isn't made up. I mean, this is it's in the it's in the Eat Lancet um, Commission, which is the basis for what's called the planetary health diet. I mean, yeah. it's, it's all been it's all been laid out, and they're you know pushing it and pushing it, and uh, and yeah, we've we've got to push back because um, we're in danger of losing control of the food supply for good. Right. You don't want to have a false dialectic where they cause a problem like mass chronic diseases caused by seed oils. And then, whoops, the solution is all based on some kind of top down ar- oligarchic distributed uh, oil that solves sol- that supposedly solves the problem. We don't know what you know other you know side effects of that product could be. Assuming there's nothing, we still that's the that's what the issue I'm focusing on, focusing on here with this conversation, assuming, you know, these products that are coming out to solve seed oil problems, assume there's no problem with the health. I don't want my uh, food system to be dominated by, you know, top-down oligarchic corporations because I, I want it to be decentralized. You know, I want to be able to get, uh, that's just a more vital system is a decentral, decentralized distribution system where you can get your fat from multiple sources. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. well, we need, we need, we need food systems at different scales. We need multiple different scales. And that's right. something that I talk about in the eggs Benedict option. I talk about the Soviet and the Russian system where you have an industrial system of food production, but then you also have a lot of local um, small scale food production, circulation of homegrown produce, etc. And it makes it makes the food supply better in so many different ways. And, you know, things were like, it was like that once upon a time in the U S as well. And right. maybe, may, maybe it could be again, but actually yeah. the general trend at the moment is heading in the opposite direction. Where and, we're and just they're, going... Yeah. They're doing it in every industry. I mean, even in the citrus industry here in Florida, they're always trying to introduce GMO solutions for the various diseases the citrus trees have. But what we really need to do is get back to proper, proper soil health, which produces highly nutritious food, including oranges and, and beef. So that's where we need to go. I really appreciate your time. Uh, Raw Egg Nationalist, thanks again for coming on and for sharing your thoughts on this important topic. Um, uh, your story is at theamericanmind.org. And um, anything else you'd like to share with us? Uh, no, that's it. No, just start, re- read the article and uh, make up your own mind. Think, think for yourself. Very good. Thanks again. Thank you.